Your Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Jide Songolu, senior government officials present, the Lagos Tech community and summit participants, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. The Lagos State Government, under the dynamic leadership of Governor Jide Songolu and the Lagos technology community, deserve our commendation for once again convening this very important platform, the art of technology. This year's theme, Smart Data, Smarter Lagos, comes at a defining moment, and I dare say in human history, a pandemic which has, while showing up all the weaknesses of most economies, has also highlighted the inevitability of technology. So here we are with a new reality, the era of virtual everything, virtual meetings, virtual birthdays, virtual weddings, and even funerals. So even when the pandemic subsides, we will still be stuck with the more efficient, safer, and cheaper ways that technology has offered us in these past few months. Lagos has long been the epicenter of Nigeria's technology revolution. From the tiny internet cafes run in tiny spaces that dotted almost every Lagos neighborhood in the 1990s, to the emergence of big players like Interswitch, Conga, and Jumia, to today's heavyweights like Candela, Paystack, and Flutterwave, and the numerous small businesses buying and selling and advertising online. Lagos has consistently shown that it has what it takes to thrive in the league of digital economies. This illustrious pedigree has also positioned Lagos as the foremost innovation hub in Africa. Consequently, this city and its technology entrepreneurs must take the lead in addressing the most urgent problems of our time. As we contend with the challenge of providing the means of self-actualization for nearly 200 million people, and one of the world's fastest growing populations. It's clear that we must marshal the resourcefulness and ingenuity of our citizens in the quest for development and growth. Given that this is a conclave of policy makers and various stakeholders in the tech ecosystem, I'd like to stress that developmental governance in the 21st century is about continuously deploying innovative solutions against our most complex challenges. In 2018, Business Day, Business Day, that's the newspaper, estimated that the average commuter in Lagos spends 30 hours in traffic weekly. These are useful man hours that can add up to high productivity if spent differently. How can we deploy smart traffic sensors and devices to manage traffic in Lagos? We've seen how low-level technology, which has already been deployed by the Lagos State Government and other private individuals like Gidi Traffic on Twitter, have successfully used crowdsourced traffic information to provide traffic updates for commuters. However, with artificial intelligence, we can automate these processes and suggest alternatives to commuters, while also providing advisories to government from historically stored traffic data over time to make plans for public spending on infrastructure, such as new roads, rail lines, public buses, toll gates, etc. These are the sort of problems to which those of us gathered here today can apply our minds. Technology can be a leveler, closing gaps in our society, such as the rural-urban divide, and bridging gaps in access to social services and broadening financial inclusion. This is why our administration, the federal government, is working to bridge the digital divide by increasing access to broadband with our national broadband plan, which was launched this year. The plan is aimed at achieving 90% broadband penetration by 2023. The plan will give special attention to underserved areas when deploying telecom services. Opportunities crying out for smart solutions abound across various sectors of our society and our economy. These are solutions that you are positioned to provide and for which Lagos can serve as technology laboratory of first resort. 
For example, digital identification is a necessity for governance, urban administration, economic planning, and the delivery of social welfare interventions. How do we mainstream technology in our bureaucratic processes so that we reduce corruption and improve the ease of doing business? How do we leverage technology to improve the logistical dimension of the national exercises such as elections or censuses? In what ways can we use technology to preserve our environment from the ravages of climate change? The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us important lessons in the necessity of applying technology-enabled solutions to strengthen our health security architecture. Tools such as telemedicine can be deployed to deliver medical services to underserved and difficult to reach areas. We must also provide the right conditions for more private sector organizations like Temigiwa's Life Bank that have been working very hard in the distribution of medical supplies to expand their reach to other states and utilize technology like drones to deliver medical supplies faster and further, thereby saving lives beyond the main cities and in the rural communities as well. Smart cities leverage data to make decisions across board. Economic data, consumption data, demographic data, population data, health data are all important factors. Across all levels of government, we need to raise our capacity to harvest, to track and analyze data, and ground policies in empirical evidence. Data is at the heart of developmental governance, and indeed, I would argue that governments need big data even more than corporations do. Whether we are discussing urban planning and public administration or economic planning and security strategy, it is impossible to attain mastery over these fields without a healthy regard for data. This is why in December last year, I had the privilege of inaugurating the steering committee for the GRID3 Nigeria project. GRID3 is the geo-referenced infrastructure and demographic data for development. It's a $50 million project in partnership with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the UK Foreign Development Office to generate, validate, and use geospatial data on population, settlements, infrastructure, and subnational boundaries. The project has led to the launch of the Grid3 Nigeria portal, which provides access to accurate, complete, and geospatially referenced data relevant to a variety of sectors. It's now evident that within the next decade, Nigeria will cease to be a country whose main contribution to the world is crude oil. The resources that we have, which are in increasingly high demand globally, are your capacity for innovation, your imagination, your creative content, and your highly adaptive solutions. Your minds and workspaces are the refineries of the present and the future. We're finally embracing the true logic of true wealth. It is not being a primary producer. It's about value added. It's about maximally leveraging what you have. Technology, and in particular data, offer that incredible opportunity. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the Art of Technology Lagos 2.0. God bless you.